Um, transformation is a bit the key, key theme of, of, of everyone's life and resources at the moment, it's a changing marketplace. And uh, that's what happened when we moved, when we moved to resourcing in-house. Um, it was all about building, as Gemma said, and the work, the fantastic work that our trainee colleagues have done. Um, they bought it in-house, they've been really successful, they've tried to be innovative in the market, introduce different things, and we really spotted an opportunity to do that as a business um, within the experience hire space. The business at the time, for one, for one reason or another, wasn't getting necessarily the service it wanted from the RPO. It also was spending a hell of a lot of money with the RPO. Um, we are, by nature, an accounts practice, and service and money are two things that shout very, very loud. In our world, I'm sure it does in, in all of your world there. So, so in February 2016, we went live with our, with our experience hire offering. And I know today is focused on senior hires, but to put this into perspective for, for, for a lot of people in the room, our experience hire can, as, as Jim mentioned, up to our associate director level, and to translate that into salaries, that can be anything from, you know, at the, at, at the associate level in our business of 16 to 18K, right the way up to 160, 180K hires, and parts of our advisory function in London. So a real cross-section of, of hires, and this is all on a fixed term contract and permanent basis at the moment. So, what were our aims? It's a horrible term that's been coined somewhere else before, but it was all about hearts and minds. Winning hearts and minds. Um, unlike where I've heard it before, we like to think we were relatively successful in doing this. Um, and, and for us, it was all about these key aims here. So hearts and minds, credibility, internal co collaboration, visibility, and of course, the reduction of costs. So how did we do this? Well. The hearts and minds piece was, was, was interesting. We, we made sure we were kind of in people's faces a little bit. Um, and it went really, really well. You know, the, the, the business made noises about wanting to look the recruiter they were working with in the whites of their eyes and challenged them over why they weren't getting the right talent. So we listened and we put our recruitment team in the business. We also learned if you're going to do that, don't stick your recruitment team sat directly behind your financial modeling team and advisory who don't necessarily want to hear people on the phones all day, every day, but in fact want to be involved in their spreadsheets. So we didn't always get it right. Um, but that was it. It was, about, it was about showing the business that we were there, showing them that we wanted to be there and work as an extension of their business as well. So we aligned our team of 18 to certain business units so that they had their dedicated points of contact as recruitment. The next point, credibility, builds on that. So we recognised as well that we wanted to bring in quite a, seat, quite a heavyweight team all of, our, all of our resourcing advisors um, have got a mixture of agency experience, RPO experience, engine house experience, many of them up to sort of 10 plus years experience. So the fact that we needed to get our recruitment absolutely bang on played, played to the success of winning hearts and minds and, and, and all of these aims as well. So we had people in, in the business with credibility, people who knew their market, people who, who were comfortable having challenging conversations with, with, with partners and directors in their business but could do so in the right way and in a credible way. And that, that, that landed really, really well. The internal collaboration piece, really important as well. As mentioned, you know, we're recruiting a wide spectrum of roles. So who knows these people's market better than the people in the market themselves? So let's leverage that. Let's build the trust of the business. Let's make sure we're engaging with them in the right way. So have the conversation, say, who do you know in your network? Let us take that for you. Let us run with it. And that translates so well into the senior hire space as well. The visibility piece I've touched on, very, very much about kind of being there, being a presence, showing the business that we were there. Whilst the RPO model worked really, really well for us, the RPO was very much outsourced. It was off-site, based up in Manchester, or all training to be precise. So now we've got a function that sits in the business, that's there, that's part, and can have those interactions on a daily basis with the business areas that are so, so key to getting to know them, and for them getting to know you as well. And finally, it was about the reduction of costs. That wonderful jazzy one that everyone gets really excited about. Um, we wanted to do that. We had a massive focus on direct sourcing. We had to. We have to justify our means. But we also recognise that with the talent that we brought into our team, we can do that. We brought in, you know, for example, in, in London, we have, a, we have an audit recruiter who is possibly one of the leading experts in audit in London. He knows his market inside out. He knows everyone in it. And he knows all the suppliers in it as well. So whilst we recognise we need to, to, to direct source. We also recognise that, that our reduction of costs can happen also if we engage with agencies. That sounds backwards, right? How can you reduce costs if you're engaged with agencies? Well, if you're, if you're direct sourcing the right roles, 
you can use the agencies the ones where you struggle with. So it's about forming a commercial service as well, as well as that. So we, our financial year runs from, from July to June. Uh, June 2017 is sort of the end of our first financial year, and we've got some results that we're relatively happy with. As I said, there's been some learnings along the way. So on the left-hand side, you see what we did with the RPO. Um, 780 hires. We can see the growth, the growth trajectory of our business. We're recruiting almost under 1,000 hires. Cost per hire reduced dramatically throughout that period. So that, that reduction of four and a half grand um, cost per offer is, is okay. We want to get it lower. This year's aim is to get it closer to the four grand mark. It's ambitious. But what that equates to in real terms is a business saving of around 2.4 million over that year if they were still with their RPO, which is something we're really proud of. Um, and of course, if you, can, if you can slap a figure like that in front of your business, <coughs> they're going to they're gonna like it. The challenge, and the challenge that we have now, especially with setting up senior highs, is what's the, big, what's the big number we can jump on? What's the big success story that we can sell? Because you can't have a 2.4 million pound saving year on year. You can't do that. And when you, you, know, you make a work for your own back, don't you? When you're successful, that, that becomes the norm. So now the challenge is how can we, how can we shout about our successes in other ways? Um, agency usage is reduced. We're, we're looking, we're, again, we want to do more on this. This, is, this, is, this, is, this figure's okay. You know, it's okay. We want to get it down closer to the 25%. We want to make sure that the, that, the, that, the, that the roles that are going out to agencies are the right ones, the ones which are really niche, the ones that are really specialist, and the ones that probably aren't worth the time of our, of our guys resourcing. So it's getting them to think about the, commercial, the commercials behind this as well. Internal mobility is an interesting one for us. We, we kind of took this on board and drove it. How do we add value? This is one of the ways we do it. So the internal mobility piece is interesting. So we've increased it by 10%. Um, what, what, what does that really mean? It means that an extra 10% of our hires were internal people. Well, if we put that in terms of attrition, that actually means we've reduced attrition rates across the areas of the business by about 2%. And again, if we'd lost those people, we would have, well, the way it's been, the way we would talk about that is that quotes around about a million, million pounds of indirect or direct savings to, to the business by keeping that talent within the business as well. So again, by understanding these stats and understanding these numbers, means we can, we can actually say, look, we've added value here. So, like everyone's dream in resourcing, right, we want to become trusted advisors. So how, how do you do that? It's not just about bums on seat reducing cost service, because if it was the case, we probably would have gone for another RPO. So what, what, else, what else have we done to ensure that we can lay the foundations for senior talent to come on board? It's the other key products we have. ATS implementation, a key headache for everyone in resourcing, I'm sure. Um, we moved to Workday, which is our HRSS, which is our HR system, um, and we, we took on the resourcing resourcing function. It's been um, an interesting an interesting transition <laughs> over to Workday. Um, I'll be really honest, systems don't float my boat, um, but uh, you know Workday has the capability to, to be a fantastic system. The other key thing about it is that we now know it's going to be really really compliant with GDPR, which is a, which is a key thing, and it's going to be a massive. Um, a massive hot topic moving forward. Um, so I know that some ATS is potentially struggling with that. Um, but what we did with it by setting it up is we set up a system that, although potentially isn't quite fit for purpose now in the CEO higher space, it definitely has the capability to do it. We wanted to layer that throughout our whole resourcing strategy so that the work that we do in experience higher lays the foundation for the guys in senior highs as well. Interview and assessor development, this needed to be redone. It was, you know, and it's still in the process of being revamped at the moment. We wanted to make our interviews more engaging. We wanted to make our systems and processes better. And we wanted to ensure that actually we've got, we've got the candidate experience at the heart of all of this. And again, we've done that. We've streamlined processes. We've given, we, we, we've given training that our team has written and rolling out across the business nationwide um, to, to hiring managers to actually help upskill them. And it was so interesting when we did this because the key, challenge, the, key, the key questions that we got throughout this wasn't how to host a great interview, it wasn't what questions should I be asking, it was things like, what stuff can I ask? If I, you know, I, wanna, I don't want to tick box about competencies, I want to find out culturally if this person's right for our business, how do I do that? How do we do that? So it's been able to implement that knowledge into the business and again, gain that credibility. One of our, one of our recruiters took on, a, took on a project to rewrite the whole referral scheme for the business. Um, and we completely tore, tore it up. We, um, every single referral that's made into a role gets a, gets, a, gets a £25 voucher and entered into a prize draw quarterly. 
um, where the amount varies up to £10,000 per winner, um, which gets pulled out of the hat. So you could refer someone to a business, the moment you can get a job, you have the opportunity to win £10,000. We've seen a massive spike and increase in referral candidates, which we know are the best quality of candidates. We reduced our agency PSL. We partnered with, we're now, we're now like that we're truly partnering with our suppliers. So we've, we've reduced that number, streamlined it, got them in, and, and using their knowledge of the market to, to give them a little bit more access to our business and not be afraid to, to let the business have that access to, to our suppliers as well. As long as we're in control of the whole process, that's okay. It's when we're not that the problems arise and the foot has to come down. And we all have those conversations. <laughs> Reporting and analytics, one of the great things about Workday is it gives you that tool. It gives you that tool to report and analyse what we're doing. We're a new function, we need to be thinking about how we're justifying our means. We're looking at our reporting analytics all the time. We've just introduced um, a new metric that we report on in, in our recruiting cost ratio that goes alongside cost per offer, the traditional cost that, uh, that our senior leadership team are interested in. And what recruitment cost ratio looks at is actually how effectively we're working, how efficiently. So it takes into account the total total remuneration that you're hiring in, um, divided by the total recruitment spend, and it gives you kind of a, a, a percentage ratio that shows you actually, you may be really effective, because cost, cost per offer is great, but if you're hiring two people through agency, 15 at a low level, the two that are through agency at a high level is going to skew your cost per offer. Does that tell us that we're working effectively? So we're looking at all of these all the time to try and revamp that, and again, all of this will take us into the senior hire space and, and, and give the senior hires team um, the foundations really to, to move forward. Um, we looked at orientation as a whole project, roll that out, revamping that and making sure that our brand values are coming all the way through that because we, we talked a lot today already about how it's great that our team's out there selling the brand, selling the journey, selling the vision of shaping a vibrant economy, but how's that landing for the candidate when they're coming into the business? So we worked, we worked with, we worked with the talent team to build our orientation <coughs> and roll that out and working with people managers to implement that as well. And finally, tapping into the alumni network that we have. So we've created a job portal for alumni so we can post, and also they can post their vacancies on it as well to help share and build that community space. So, off the back of all of that, all of that, the business came to us and said, right, we know, and this is Financial Services Advisory Group, one of our most profitable groups in London, came to us and said, right, we're going to need to hire six partners, guys. You guys have done a fantastic job. Can you, can you, can you take this on for us? We said, yeah, sure, we'll run a pilot, let's test it, we'll try. And so we did. So we seconded someone out of the experienced hire team to run this pilot as a standalone role. So this person was, um, what, at that time, an assistant manager within our business, um, stepped out of her, her role as resourcing and moved into this role to run this. So we wanted to, we wanted to hire six, pilot, six partners in this pilot. To set the scene, it's the wild west of recruitment. <laughs> business do what they want, they shoot from the hip, big time. Costs, costs through the roof, no one's got control of it, we've got partners, people at partner level coming in to meet, meet for six coffee chats with six different people, having the same conversation without it going anywhere. <laughs> now, it sounds familiar, I'm sure, to, to many people, but it's, it's a challenge. So well, how does that look from a candidate experience? So this person took control of that, took ownership of that, and was given buy-in from the business to do that as well. She partners were accountable to her. The business partner, who's business, business partners who take and took ownership of this, were accountable to her. She had the power to turn around and say, "Guys, you need to pull your finger out. You need to see. You need to see these people and get it right." So whilst that was happening, all in the background, we were looking at streamlining the processes, getting a proper process flow there, and running it, um, which was really great, and it worked really, really nicely in some respects. The challenge: we didn't fill many of the roles, so. Um, you know, six months we did this for, but there was enough there about it, and we got enough data about it to realise that actually this, this is something that they want, the business wanted our team to take on. And Jen's going to carry on to talk to you now about how, how we set up the team. Thanks, Sam. Definitely three minutes, thanks. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, based on. Um, our senior highest pilots, um, although we didn't actually fill those roles as such, it, it, it actually highlighted that we needed to, to put a senior team in place and the business actually approached us and asked us to do that. So um, I was part of um, supporting that and setting up that new senior team. Uh, we, we, we looked at where, we spoke to the business, we looked at the, the, the thinking around how many numbers, what the numbers were going to be, how many partners, directors we were going to need over that next 12 months. 
and we based the team on putting two managers in place. Um, sure. Yeah, can you move along? Two managers in place um, to do the operational recruitment, but also to run the strategy for this team. On the numbers that we were looking at, that looked right on time. Um, we needed it to be manager on the feedback from the pilot pilot study that the, the exec role was not quite senior enough. We need someone to drive the strategy, drive this forward, and create this new team, new processes, new setup. So we put two resourcing managers in there. We, we then created a resourcing advisor role, which was a completely different role to one we had before. Um, this, and it was a bit of a sort of a, a suck it and see type role, really. This person's going to come in and basically be a researcher for our in house search function. A um, bit of a big role, it can be as, as massive or as small as you make it, but we need someone to come in and do the mapping, do the research, and um, support with the interview process because that's obviously so um, detailed at, at senior level. Um, and that person's come on board. The interesting thing for this team is. Um, not, not necessarily deliberately, but we ended up recruiting all of these three people internally. Um, we went outside, we, we looked, we, we ran a really <coughs> robust process, but actually the best candidates were the internal candidates. So that has actually, in hindsight, been brilliant for us because they knew the business already, they knew so many of the stakeholders already. Our, our guys have stepped up from our, our team, the experienced high team, stepped up with most of these resource manager jobs already had relationships with the stakeholders. Um, so starting starting a new function where people know you, trust you already, and off the back of our experience high success has been really, really beneficial to us. And I think in hindsight, that was a really good move, although we didn't think of it at the time. Um, so moving on to the next slide. Um, we, we had to think about our priorities. <coughs> yeah, okay. We had to think about our, our key priorities, which is obviously what you have to do when you set up this new function. I've already spoken to you about one resourcing. That was a priority for us. Let's create this one resourcing piece. It's led by the same resourcing lead. He has three teams sitting underneath him, all of whom are now really aligned, really providing consistently great service, high quality, credibility floating throughout the whole of those three teams, and coming together as, as one on regular occasions so that we're sharing best practice, sharing stories, sharing successes and actually wanting to each other to do well so that we can all play off, you know, experience hiring senior talent work so closely together. We need to be working off each other, working with each other the whole time. So creating one resourcing was, was very important. Gaining credibility, obviously, an obvious priority, and as Sam mentioned earlier, visibility was absolutely key in that. Getting out there, meeting these people, getting the VPs on board, the business partners who still run a lot of the internal processes here. Um, enhancing candidate stakeholder experience at Grant Thornton, we have a slightly different culture we feel to the rest of our, our market. Um, candidate experience is everything to us, absolutely everything. We're really, really passionate about it. So, you know, one of our first things we did was to look at the candidate experience and map that out, um, making sure all the touch points that are within that candidate experience throughout the process we now own and we are responsible for and we can manage that so that the candidates get this consistently great experience all the way through, whereas before it was all over the place. Um, obviously reducing time, reducing costs. Um, I guess our primary focus was to create an in-house exec search function with people who are aligned to our brand, Grant Thornton brand. So basically a direct sourcing model is what we're after, um, using our people to sell our culture, we're passionate about our culture. But at the same time, we very much appreciate that we will need to use agencies and, and, and um, research firms on occasions, and, and that's fine, we want to build those relationships as well. But the reducing of costs and time is, is down to our team now um, to drive that. And creating sustainable service, very briefly, we need this to be ongoing, to be long term. We need to be able to pipeline candidates, that's our next challenge, our next project. We need technology to support us pipelining candidates, which we don't actually have at the moment, but it is a work in progress. Um, I'm just going to whiz through our process because I thought it might be interesting for some of you who are starting out. I've spoken to a few of you today who are in the early stages of this. Um, before <coughs> our process was about four or five informal meetings before they even got into the formal process, and then there was another four or five <laughs> meetings after that. Um, so obviously we needed to condense this. Um, mm -hmm. We've got it down to four, four interview stages now. Um, basically, we are 
having a coffee meeting, which is similar to the guys at TFL were doing that, that sort of get to know you, um, get to know what what folks you vote, what 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 is really important to you as a candidate, and we set those up. We sometimes involved, sometimes not, depending on who's who's around and who wants to do this. We then take them into a more formal process of um, a competency interview. Um, followed by a quality interview, followed by a leadership interview. So the competency interview looks at your, your sort of technical capability, quality interview looks at your, your approach to risk and quality, and leadership looks at your, your growth mindset, how you're going to grow your team, your business, yourself. Um, but so we, we really condense that, and that already is showing benefits in our time to vote. Okay, and then finally I thought it might be interesting to talk to you about what challenges we can have against, and we'll go quickly, um, and, and some of our successes so far. So, with regards to challenges, I spoke to a few people on my table earlier about the acknowledging the embedded agency relationships that the partners have. I think it was, it should have been a surprise to us, but it was a bit of a surprise to us how important these relationships were, and we needed to embrace that, we needed to have a quick think back. What were we going to do to allow this to happen, to enable them to still speak to their, their agencies for their market intel, etc. But now it's more about us proving that we can be that person as well. We can also be on the end of the phone to give them this intel, to give them what's happening in the market. And that's going to take time. Um, we're going to build that credibility up, but that, that's absolutely a, a key challenge. Stakeholder buy-in was obviously a key challenge, although off the back of our experience hire team, that was easier than we expected. Um, people were bought in, there were a few people, partners that didn't necessarily know um, that this was happening, so there was a lot of conversations and face to faces that had to take place. They don't necessarily always read their emails or their comms, which is obviously really obvious and apparent to us now. Um, another challenge we have is with our two new managers that have come into this role, we needed them to be a manager level so they could be strategic. Um, volumes have gone nuts since we came on board. Uh, obviously, we when you start something like this up, you unearth what is going on, and there was an awful lot going on. So we now have, we are now working with a number of roles that we predicted for the whole year that we'd be working on. So the ability for our managers to be strategic is, is you know, it, it's less so at the moment. We've had to focus on operational, which, which is obviously the priority to become credible and to get, you know, get those jobs filled. But in time, we will need to look at the structure of our team and see whether we need to make some changes there. But we can be agile and we can be flexible there. Um, we wanted to differentiate our service from experience hire. We, we've come on on the back of experience hire, but we wanted to show the partners this was going to be different. We were recognising this as senior, senior talent. This is you know, 200 grand salaries coming in the door plus. We needed to make sure our process was different and, and that we were reflecting, some people said earlier, oh, you know, the candidate journey, you can't have people applying on an online system necessarily at this level. We needed to work off the back of experience hire, but at the same time differentiate ourselves um, at that level, which is, is still a work in progress, but it's, it's going well. Systems is a challenge. As Sam said, we've got work day, and it's going much better for experience hire, but it is a challenge for senior talent, and that's an ongoing situation. We want to be able to pipeline properly. Um, and then volumes, I've, I've talked about, we're on high volumes at the moment, which is something that is challenging and we need to look at. Uh, and Briefly, successes so far. We are early days. We started in, on the 1st of July, um, so we're four or five months in. We have made five offers, which I think is incredible for our team to have done that, four of which have been direct, directly sourced, headhunted by our team. Um, we've mapped all the processes and all the candidate touch points, as I mentioned, and we now have a better process in place. Already, we're getting better candidate feedback, better stakeholder feedback. So, this is you know, they know what's going on, they know who to come to if they have questions, they know who's running this process, which is great. Um, moving down a couple, resourcing advisor role has been a huge success. This was a suck it and see, we didn't know how this would work. We, we took this person on a temporary contract just, just to see what would happen, but internally we've managed to find someone, probably by luck to be honest, but she's never done anything like this before, and she has taken to it amazingly well, and she she claims to be very nosy, very interested in people, wanting to know who's moved where and who's done what. And that, that personality, we've realised, suits this role down to the ground. And if we were to expand that, that role and take on other people into that role, we'd be looking for exactly that type of person to do that. And that's been news to us, really, um, and really interesting to us. So that's a real success. 
Um, and the guy spent a lot of time creating the, the documentation, the candidate documentation, the PACS. Um, Geraldine, we were talking about the PACS. We've, mm -hmm. we've been doing similar um, creative candidate PACS. Mm -hmm. They've spoke to every single role that we're doing. Um, and that's been a huge improvement. 